How many of us know this video? Quite a lot of us. So um, how could you describe this beautiful girl in the video? Is it strength? Is it bravery? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's not really... I mean, it's not really funny, but we always make jokes out of things, right? So, um, how could you describe the beautiful girl in the video? Was she brave? Was she strong? Either ways, to know this video happened in 2021 and not 1921. And in a university, it's not just sad and scary. To me, it's very, very disgusting and disturbing. I have so many questions running through my mind. Every day I come across that video or any form of oppression, harassment, or abuses on women. But the two questions that keep reoccurring whenever I come across that video is, how really did we get here? And how are we going out of this mess? Growing up in northern Nigeria, I have realized from a very early age that being strong as a woman comes with no choice. And every morning, I wake up with the intention to amplify the voices, choices, and worth of these strong women I come across every day to acknowledge their struggles and their strength, to make it be seen and heard to the best of my ability. As the youngest dean of students in Nigeria, not just female, <laughs> I realized that I realized that the only way to really help these women to gain back their voices, choices, and worth is to reclaim back my religion. Now, this is very, very important to me. As a single Muslim woman, I am very proud, and my heart is so full of gratitude of this faith. It has given me so much conviction and strength to stand up for what is right and what is just, to be empathetic, to be kind, and to be compassionate, to stand up for what is, to stand up for injustice against any form of any human being, oh, in fact, even animals. But most importantly, what this faith has done for me it has taught me to read. As the first verse of the Quran says, read in the name of your Lord that created you. So, but honestly, we cannot overlook or downplay the damage that a lot of religious scholars have done to this faith. Not just my faith, but the rest of the faith, majority faith practices across the globe. The religion misinterpretation, mispresentation, misuse, misconception, and even personal opinion of these scholars have molded and influenced our social and cultural norms. For example, what we've seen in that video. That was just an opinion of a scholar about Abaya. That is the most decent dressing I've ever seen in my life a woman should wear. So, part, thank you. Part of my job as a dean of students is I serve as an advisor, a counselor, and the first point where thousands of students come to. 60% of these students that come to me have academic or personal problem. But one problem is so common, particularly to my female students. This problem has knows no gender, knows no age, religion, or tribe, but has one commonality, female. So this, this problem is denied choices. 
majority of women don't have the right to make choices. Now, I'm not talking about luxurious choices, whether to travel, business class, or economy. I'm talking about basic choices that makes them human. For instance, whether to study law or international relations, whether to study biology or medicine, when, who, how to get married, how many children to have, when to have children. In fact, even how to have the children through CS or natural birth. Every basic thing that makes them human is being imposed on them, either by the society, religious group, family members, sometimes even friends. So, so now, how really can I help this woman when we're all in the same boat together? One thing is certain, I cannot pour from an empty cup. Can I? No. <laughs> so what I decided to do was to reclaim back the teachings of my faith through seeking knowledge, through research, and asking the right questions. For instance, who, what is my worth, my role, and value as a woman? Why do we still subject women the same way they were subjected during the Jahiliya period? Why are we not equal in the eyes of men when we're equal in the eyes of Allah, as God has says in the Quran? O oh, humanity, we've created you from man and woman, I've made, and we've made you into people and tribes so that you, may, you might get to know each other. The most noble amongst you are those that are most righteous, and Allah is all aware, and all aware and all knowing. So, so um, by asking these questions, I learned really to learn, relearn, and unlearn some practices of my religious misinterpretations. I have learned to differentiate between Arab culture and Islamic culture. And not only did this knowledge give me power, it liberated me. It taught me that being a woman is not just a privilege, it's an honor and I am precious, that even before I was born, there were rules and regulations by God to guide me against this oppression, abuses, and harassments. That the men around me are supposed to be my protectors and not the perpetrators. That paradise was promised for my father if he raised three of us righteously and kindly. That paradise is of my kids lies under their obedience towards me. But most importantly, I realize everything that has been emphasized, like the prophet's light like Simon, take care of the woman, take care of the woman, take care of the woman. Nothing has been emphasized more like that in his last like Simon. That anything that is well protected and has been brought down to be protected has to be extremely precious. That not only I am precious, but I am whole. And I have been given the right to make my own choices, to be educated, to seek divorce, to have custody of my kids. And guess what? The beautiful part of it, to be financially independent. <laughs> so. I am a strong believer that religion and human rights are not mutually exclusive. In fact, the Prophet ﷺ said, the best amongst you are those that are best to their wives. But by keeping silent, we encourage the practices of these abuses, harassment, and oppression around us. We need to understand that human rights are human rights. Women dignity are human dignity. 
And when we come together to protect these rights, we improve the welfare of our society in general. So, in order to really forge forward, we need not just to speak up, because we've been doing that for so long. We need to stand up and act. We need to stand up and be the voice of the unheard, the strength of the weak. We need to come together. And this time around is not the battle of the sexes. It's the battle to restore back humanity and the teachings of our faith. For me, what really forging forward means is when every human being has the right to make their own choices and when each and every one of us feels safe. Thank you so much.